oh, life in general is that. It really is a matter of perspective of the way you look at things that affects your attitude and maybe if you had a different perspective you could change your attitude and when you change your attitude you change the actions that you choose to do. Gratitude is challenging for many people because sometimes they don't look beyond themselves to be grateful for what they have. They look sometimes only on one item specific focused thing that they see and they don't look beyond that so that they don't have an attitude of being grateful for what they do have because they can't see past the one thing that's glaring in front of them. They have so obsessed themselves with that one thing that they don't take a bigger view of everything else that might be involved. God, when he was dealing with the children of Israel in the desert, heard the mumblings and the grumblings of their people that God had delivered from Egypt out of bondage and slavery into a freedom that they were being moved into a land that they would become eventually the children of Israel again, that they would be free to have a land flowing with milk and honey. But unfortunately, to get there, they didn't recognize what they had been from and brought out of and give thanks for that. But they looked at what they had in their present state of mind and said, that's not good enough. And they wanted more. They were obsessing about possessing something that they wanted that God did not want for them to have at that moment. And I think sometimes that's the way we are, is that we always want the next thing. We don't be content in what state we're in, so we don't always recognize gratitude for what it should be, which is to say, thank you, God, for today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And in accepting the idea that this day, today, that you live in, whatever it may be, that God made it, then when you're complaining about it, then you're complaining about God. So you don't recognize that tomorrow may be better or worse. And so you don't live in the moment or the day that you're existing in. You're not accepting that God wants to be with you in this day that he has made. And so gratitude then becomes hard, it becomes less of a choice and more of a forgotten virtue. God wanted the children of Israel to be grateful and taught them a song to sing for that with which they had been brought out of Egypt. And that should have carried them through into the promised land, but it didn't. And he held them accountable for it, and they wound up dying and perishing in the wilderness for not being grateful for what God had done. We should, at times, look back as well as accept our present circumstances with graciousness and thankfulness for what we have been brought hitherto or to this day with what God has done for us. We could have done it. <laughs> we could be dying right now, suffering. Maybe you are. But all of us in some way have experienced God's goodness. We've experienced God's grace. We've experienced God's forgiveness. If you're a Christian, you've experienced his mercy and his kindness. So, when you choose not to be grateful today for what you have, no matter what it may be, even if it's trials or tribulations, then you're actually saying to God that you're not thankful for your salvation that he's brought you through up to this day. Are you thankful? then give thanks with a grateful heart. And don't let anyone rob you of your joy, steal away that attitude that you're developing of being thankful for everything. Because God says in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That is God's will. It's not a question of, oh, well, let me go look up the Ten Commandments and find out what God's will is. No, he says, this is my will. 
in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So that's one you could write down, this is God's will, in everything give thanks. So you say, thank you, Lord. And some people practice the idea of saying it, and then as they say it, they feel it. Maybe that works. But for me, I think developing a perspective of knowing that God has blessed me and is blessing me and will bless me in the future gives me the opportunity to look at everything from his bigger perspective as it will be worked out for my benefit. So then I thank him for all things, even the tribulation and the challenges that go on, even the times when I fail. A thankful heart can also be cynical. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, from Ephesians 5.20. Let me recommend the cultivation of the habit of thankfulness as an effective cure for the cynical, sour habits of fault-finding among Christian believers. Thanksgiving has great curative powers. The heart that is constantly overflowing with gratitude will be safe from those attacks of resentfulness and gloom that bother so many religious persons. A thankful heart cannot be cynical. Please be aware that I'm not recommending any of the applied psychology nostrums so popular in liberal circles, but rather what we are saying is we who have been introduced to God through the miracle of new birth realize that there is a scriptural ability for the cultivation of gratitude as a cure for spiritual sourness. Even for some it may be the start of removing bitterness from your soul. Further experience teaches us that it works. We should never take any blessing for granted, but accept everything as a gift from the Father of Lights. We should write on a tablet or on a piece of paper one by one the things for which we are grateful to God and to our fellow men about. Personally, I've gotten great help from the practice of talking over with God the many kindnesses that I have received from others. I like to begin with thanking him for his thoughts of me back to creation, for giving his son to die for me when I was still a sinner, for giving the Bible and his blessed spirit who inwardly gives us understanding of it. I thank him for my parents, teachers, statesmen, patriots, for all things. I am grateful to God for all of these and more, and I shall not let God forget that I am grateful. You know, one of the things that I would like to see that amazes me is so few Christians today will take the stand in the political arena of saying thank God for their country, thank God for their president, thank God for their Congress, and thank God for his appointment of these men who have been put in authority over us by God himself. Now, men like to think that they choose whom they vote for, but God appoints whom he has placed in authority over us. Rebelling against authority is what Satan did. The choice of Christians today is to be thankful for presidents like President Obama, President Bush, both, or any other president, President Clinton, any president, to be thankful for those that have been put in authority over you. In this Thanksgiving Day, that should be one of the prayers. And yet I doubt that President Obama, and giving thanks for his appointment by God, is high on the priority list. I doubt that in giving thanks in everything, that people sit down and say, you know, I thank God that the economy has downturned because I've learned to change my priorities and I've scaled back my frivolous spending. I doubt that the people would give thanks for that. I doubt that people would give thanks for having an incurable disease that caused me to be so dependent upon God that I'm always turning towards Him in gratitude for that with which this disease that nearly killed me and does plague me at times has so caused me to be in right relationship with him. Do you thank God for those things that don't seem so obviously thankful to be? I thank God not just for the President of the United States of America, 
I even thank God for you. Because in you being who you are, it helps me to be who I am. And because of who he is, we become likened unto him. So there's really a great reason to become grateful for what God has done, because it is the day the Lord has made. And these are men God has put in authority over you. Be glad and give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you.